आज हम जो है वो डिस्कस करेंगे प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ स्टार्स को आज भी और कल के ये भी और नेक्स्ट वीक तो दोनों भी इसके चार लेक्चर्स हैं दे बी फोकस्ड ऑन अंडरस्टैंडिंग दी टेम्परेचर प्रेशर्स एंड एवोल्यूशन ऑफ स्टार्स एंड देयर प्रॉपर्टीज आइडिया ये है कि हमने जो कॉन्सेप्ट क्वार्टर मैकेनिक्स में सीखे हैं वो और स्टेटिकल मैकेनिक्स पे और फिर जो आप ऑलरेडी थर्मोडाइनमिक्स को जानते हैं स्पेशली आइडियल गैस लॉ उसकी हम एप्लीकेशन के तौर पर इन ऑब्जेक्ट्स को स्टडी करेंगे सो लेट मी बिगिन विद द रिव्यू ऑफ द लास्ट थिंग दैट वी वर स्टडी लास्ट टाइम इन द लास्ट लेक्चर व्हिच वाज द वाइडियल थ्योरम एक्चुअली ओनली वन फॉर्म ऑफ वाइडियल थ्योरम बट वी विल स्टिल कॉल इट दिस इसमें हमने दो जो मैसेज हैं उनकी कैनेटिक एनर्जी कंप्यूट की थी और उनके प्रचल एनर्जी भी एंड वी सॉ दैट दी काइनेटिक एनर्जी इज इक्वल टू नेगेटिव हाफ ऑफ द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एंड द टोटल एनर्जी इफ वी एड प्लस से काइनेटिक प्लस पोटेंशियल हम इसको इन टर्म्स ऑफ काइनेटिक अगर लिखना चाहें तो इसको हम लिख सकते हैं के प्लस माइनस टू के इज इक्वल टू माइनस के या इन टर्म्स ऑफ अगर यू लिखना चाहते हैं आप तो के की जगह पे ये माइनस हाफ यू कर दें विच इज दी हाफ यू तो इन टर्म्स ऑफ काइनेटिक एनर्जी टोटल एनर्जी इज इक्वल टू दी नेगेटिव ऑफ दी पोटेंशियल काइनेटिक एनर्जी and uh, the total energy is equal to half of the potential energy. अब अगर हमारे और ये जो चीज है हमने वो ये compute की थी दो masses के लिए. This can be generalized to uh, a lot of uh, masses like the, maybe a dust cloud is a hard point to a dust particle mass है. Then this thing would still be valid. Okay. और इसका मतलब है कि इफ वी हैव लेट्स से अ कलेक्शन ऑफ डिफरेंट मैसेज देन इट्स टोटल एनर्जी इज इक्वल टू दिस एंड टोटल एनर्जी अब जो स्टार्स हैं दे आर थ्योराइज टू फॉर्म फ्रॉम अ स्टार्टिंग क्लाउड तो लेट्स से वी हैव दिस क्लाउड व्हिच इज अ ह्यूज क्लाउड मे बी सेवरल लाइट इयर्स Uh, in diameter, uh, maybe uh, a bit uh, smaller. And as the time passes, the gravity pulls the dust particles together, and the cloud collapses to a smaller size and a denser object. So, when it comes from here, here, it goes. So, its potential energy, which is, will decrease. And the decrease in potential energy means the uh, Kinetic energy will increase, and since the temperature is related to the average kinetic energy through this thing, we going to KBT. That the average temperature into Boltzmann constant is the uh, average kinetic energy per particle. If you let's say the total of n particles, then total kinetic energy we can write as n. KB. So, as the kinetic energy increases, because total energy decreases, kinetic energy increases, which means the temperature of the cloud increases. So, it starts from a cloud of almost uh, uh, zero Kelvin uh, temperature, very slightly above zero Kelvin. But then, as it collapses, it becomes a star. और इसका जो टेम्परेचर बढ़ता जाता है ये यहाँ पे एवरेज की बात हो रही है क्योंकि और इसकी प्रोफाइल इसका समझिए कि सेंटर में टेम्परेचर ज़्यादा होता है और बाहर पे टेम्परेचर कम होता है क्योंकि अंदर ही जो प्रेशर है वो ज़्यादा होता है। सो दिस इज़ हाउ अ स्टार इज़ फॉर्म एंड देन कीप्स ऑन दिस थिंग द अब यहाँ सबसे दो सिचुएशन हो सकती है। 
अगर तो ये मैथ कम है ये खास फिजिकल मैथ है तो तो ये पूरा ग्रेविटी का प्रेशर इतना ज्यादा नहीं होता जिसको जो मैटर है वो सपोर्ट ना कर सके थ्रू इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फोर्सेस क्योंकि जैसे हमारी अर्थ है फॉर एग्जांपल ठीक है जो अर्थ की आउटर लेयर्स हैं दे आर ऑल क्रशिंग टुवर्ड्स द इनर साइड बट स्टिल द इनसाइड इट्स नॉट हॉट एनफ फॉर इट टू बी अ स्टार तो इसलिए कि जो प्रेशर है वो इतना ज्यादा नहीं है जो के एटम और मॉलिक्यूल्स की आपस की जो रिपल्शन है वो उसको सपोर्ट ना कर सके जो इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रिपल्शन है डिफरेंट चार्जेस की वो उसको बैलेंस कर देती है एंड द ऑब्जेक्ट स्टेज लेकिन अगर मैथ बहुत ज्यादा हो व्हिच इज व्हिच हैपेंस इन अ टिपिकल स्टार इनसाइड जो है तब प्रति इतना ज्यादा बढ़ जाता है दैट द न्यूक्लियर फ्यूजन रिएक्शन स्टार्ट अह जो के ज्यादातर जो क्लाउड्स है they are uh, uh, made of hydrogen atom so hydrogen atoms start to fuse together to form helium that freezes it up or us energy ki wajah se when the energy is added to it the star stabilizes kyun kyunki jab isme energy add hogi to uski total energy kya hogi badhegi when the total energy increases the kinetic energy decreases the pressure decreases and the star is stable और ये प्रोसेस हमें चलता रहता है जब तक कि सारा हाइड्रोजन खत्म नहीं होता इवन द एनर्जी इज एडेड टू इट इट इज स्टेबलाइज द द कोलैप्स इज स्टॉप टू योर केयर बिकॉज इफ यू लुक एट द प्रोफाइल सो एट अ गिवन लेयर देयर इज ग्रेविटी व्हिच इज पुशिंग डाउनवर्ड एंड देन फ्यूजन हियर इज प्रोड्यूसिंग एनर्जी व्हिच इज लाइक से पुशिंग आउटवर्ड सो once the fusion is ignited the collapse stops and the star becomes a stable main sequence star and it continues like this for several billions of years until it runs out of hydrogen when it runs out of hydrogen the collapse begins or agar to mass thoda hai zyada nahi hai to then wo jo collapse hai it's not it doesn't produce enough to print the core to start the helium cycle to fuse helium together because you need a high energy to fuse helium together and that collapse results in a boom where the core uh, at the center it becomes a core this la you can like it jo bahar wali layers hai wo bahar ki taraf jaise dhamake mein is a short layer se nikalti hai so the outer layers hai they go outwards and the inner layer collapse together or again मैस ज्यादा हो तो फिर क्लैप्स एक जगह पे जाके रुक जाता है जहां पे हीलियम साइकिल स्टार्ट होता है एंड देन हीलियम स्टार्ट टू फ्यूज टुगेदर एंड द क्लैप्स स्टॉप एंड द साइकिल कंटिन्यूज अंटिल इट रीचेस आयरन एंड आफ्टर आयरन इट्स द सेम थिंग वंस ऑल द फ्यूजन रिएक्शन स्टॉप्स देन द स्टॉप स्टार क्लैप्सेस एंड ऑन द इनर साइड देयर इज अ कोर दैट इज लेफ्ट एंड द आउटर साइड इज अ बिग क्लाउड दिस इज यूजुअली कॉल्ड अ सुपरनोवा और असल में उस क्लैप से वापस फिर आप यू कह लें कि डस्ट क्लाउड बन जाता है इट स्टार्टेड विद द डस्ट क्लाउड बी केम अ स्टार एंड आफ्टर इट्स लाइफ इट बिकम्स अ क्लाउड अगेन लेकिन अब वाले द सिस्टम स्टार्ट्स अगेन बट इन अ डिफरेंट वे अब ये है कि अब जो एंड साइकिल है इसमें एक तो एक स्मॉलर कोर रह जाएगी एंड देन देयर इज दिस बिग क्लाउड अगेन इट इज एक्सपैंड इनटू स्पेस सो ये जो क्लाउड है दिस कैन अगेन बिगिन टू गेट टुगेदर टू फॉर्म अनदर स्टार एंड देन द सिस्टम एंड एक्चुअली जो हमारा सोलर सिस्टम है इज थ्योराइज्ड टू बी फॉर्म फ्रॉम दिस सेकंड जनरेशन क्लाउड क्यों क्योंकि जब ये क्लाउड क्लैप हो रहा था the sun was formed at the center and uh, the planets hai jo uske gird bane usme jaise earth hai ya mercury hai aur uh, venus aur mars in ke andar other than hydrogen uh, elements bhi hai so that's that's of it the side of probably part of our galaxy because it goes to a very big distance okay so at the end of 19th century there was this big question in front of people what keeps a star burning why a star is emitting energy people knew this thing 
this final theorem already that a star is probably being compressed under its own weight and that completion is resulting in uh, uh, a loss of potential energy. The potential energy, okay, is the potential energy is more than the potential energy is less. Then the more compressed the potential energy is more. So the decrease of gravitational potential energy, people thought that that is what is being radiated away in the form of uh, heat and light. So let's compute that if this theory is correct or not by computing the uh, change in the gravitational potential energy when a star is formed from a cloud. The source of energy is that is the gravitational potential energy. When the cloud is collapsing and making, let's say, a star of radius Rs and mass Ms, and the collapse is continuing, this collapse is decreasing its potential energy, which is being radiated away as a form of uh, heat and light. So let's compute this uh, decrease in potential energy for a star of given mass and radius when it is formed from uh, a cloud, which is maybe, uh, for our purpose, let's assume that the cloud is extended to infinity. That it starts from infinity and then uh, collapses on it. So how is the potential energy compute going to be? And for that, let's uh, begin from this thing, that suppose I have an intermediate state. What can I make a star to have? It's uh, like this. So let's say that uh, this is the intermediate stage and there is this dust particle of mass dm and suppose the star is already formed up to a radius r with some mass small m. How much gravitational potential energy is lost when this small element of mass dm comes from infinity and settle around this sphere of radius r. This is the final, this is the actual star. So this is the an intermediate situation. The star is forming from a cloud. And I want to compute how much potential energy is lost when the cloud was settled into this star. For that, let's consider the intermediate situation that only a, a mass small m has contracted to a radius r and uh, I will then compute uh, all the way from r0 to r is equal to rs. So let's say there's a dust particle dm or a small particle dm, it comes from infinity and settles in a ring, uh, in a shell around this uh, sphere of radius r, then the change in the Gravitational potential energy is uh, the potential energy of this particle here minus its potential energy at infinity. So infinity में जितनी भी इसकी potential energy थी, उस को हम minus कर लेते हैं जो इसकी potential energy यहाँ पे थी, and uh, let's choose the reference of infinity as zero, and potential energy at this point, ये जो ring है, इसकी जो mass है वो d m है इसकी प्रतिशत अधिक माइनस g m d m ओवर आर तो दिस इज़ दी ग्रेविटेशनल प्रतिशत अधिक चेंज व्हेन दिस स्मॉल मैस वाज ब्रॉड फ्रॉम इनफिनिटी टू दिस शेल ऑफ़ रेडियस आर d u g प्रतिशत अधिक है किसी भी स्मॉल मैस m t of the infinity state shall be like that. Okay, and so let's say this is the pressure energy at this point, this is the infinity, infinity is zero here, so you have this pressure energy, you get g, m, m, no masses, and a dm, and a d, and then you have a distance of r, and because this internal mass can be thought of as concentrated at this point. So the total potential energy, ug is, the integral of this over R from R0 to Rs. So this becomes minus G 
M P M over R will the integration limit is on the radius. So what is this D M? This D M can be written as <coughs> the density into the volume of this shell. Gravitational potential energy change. A has small mass. So this is the total for the stock. So here the change has, this is the total change in, in the dust cloud pressure energy when it was brought from infinity to form this stock. So that R changes from 0 to Rs. So this for computer degree, let's say this is dm, the small mass of this shell. So this shell ki mass hai, I can write it as uh, the density here, rho into the volume of this shell or this spherical shell ka volume kitna hoga? 4 pi r square b r so u g now is minus 4 pi g 0 to r s m r square b r into rho The small m here, this is also varying as r is varying. Okay, this is the mass of the mass of the mass of the mass of the mass the mass of 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 the the mass of the mass of the mass of so this M is the mass of this uh, uh, partial sphere, which depends on the density. So to compute M, we now need to make a hypothesis about the density of this uh, star. Or in general, the star has the density jo hai, it's, uh, has been computed using detailed calculations, something like this. Okay? Uh, the, it's very high at the core and it becomes smaller as we go out and it's very small at the outer layer because it's very hot so on the outside it's like just hot gases but for these calculations let me assume that uh, rho of r is some constant rho c for simplicity so rho the density of the star is constant and let's take it to rho c so if this is rho c what should be the mass inside a small sphere of radius r? It should be rho of r b b, okay? And if this is constant, this is just d b, and this is nothing but the volume of this uh, small sphere, and this would be. 4 pi by 3 r. So this is the mass of this uh, partially formed sphere. So let's put this thing there and we now get the total loss in gravitational pressure energy is minus 4 pi square over 3 g rho c square, this rho is the rho, rho c is the constant, this is the constant, this is the constant, this is 4 pi over 3, this is the constant, a r over 6, this is the constant, and r cube is the constant, this is the r 4, 0, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, it's not constant, okay? Actually, it's not constant. For these calculations, we are taking it to be constant. Because if I do this then the whole lecture is going to be lost just in calculations. Okay? So, this is the expression for this uh,
changing potential energy. So we have this rho c square and this r4. And let's compute this constant rho c in terms of uh, the mass and radius of the star. Okay, we usually try to express the properties of a star in terms of its total mass and its radius. For this, rho c is Rho c is nothing but the mass divided by the volume of this. So this is our rho c. So the loss in gravitational potential energy is minus 4 pi square over 3. G rho c is the square again. M s square. Square R two four. ये integrate करें इतना आएगा ये आएगा R five zero to R s और ये बन गया ये second solve हो गया ये three ऊपर आएगा five हाँ यहाँ पे five ये three square ऊपर आएगा एक three second solve लेकिन यहाँ पे आएगा three over five g ms square और यहाँ पे रिवर्स पुट करेंगे पहले rs फिर जीरो जब rs पुट करेंगे तो rs पावर फाइव आ जाएगा और ये rs सी से कैंसिल होके नीचे आ जाएगा rs सो दिस इज द लॉस इन पोटेंशियल एनर्जी व्हेन अ डस्ट क्लाउड स्कैटर्ड अप टू इनफिनिटी इज ब्रॉड टुगेदर टू फॉर्म अ स्टार ऑफ मैस ms एंड रेडियस rs Okay. And we did very simple calculation assuming a very simplistic model of the star with constant density rho, which is what we can equal to rho rho c. Okay. Now, you will do this work. Then, let's take the density to be linear, where you can consider the density to be some constant. 1 minus r over r s. So again, जो x जो हमने ज़्यादा detailed model से calculations की हुई हैं, that tell us that the density is not even linearly varying. It's like this, but this linear approximation approximates the actual situation much better than this constant profile. अगर आप linear से करें ना, तो the calculation get little bit longer. Actually, it's not difficult at all. क्योंकि आपने इस row आपको वहाँ पे put करना है m जो है मैंने जान उसके देखे m इस तरह से compute किया ताकि आप इसी row c को यहाँ पे रखे तो m भी इसी तरह से compute करने m of r क्या होगा okay so you put this m of r there do this integral and all you will get so this is for constant row and if you do all those tedious calculations with the minus sign you will get just an additional factor of 1.24 with this and you can see the book for the calculation for this model this is for linear row of r so one situation that I solved here very quickly was to make a row of r to row c in a constant. Okay? Or as a two six solution, a row of r more you can take it to be linearly decreasing from center to the surface because usually it's denser at the center and uh, lighter at the uh, at the outside. Uh, ये कहाँ से है? ये यहाँ से है। ये रो फॉर को रो सी पुट कर दिया और एम को ये पुट कर दिया। ओके? सो नो लेट्स डू दिस कैलकुलेशन फॉर द सन। फॉर सन, नो दिस इज़ टू फॉर ऑल स्टार। फॉर सन, एक चीज़ कहाँ में पता है? व्हिच वी कैन मेक इट वेरी इज़ी कि पर सेकंड सन कितनी एनर्जी पे है वो रेडिएट करें दैट्स कॉल्ड ल्यूमिनोसिटी ओके एंड वी कैन एक्चुअली वेरी इजीली कंप्यूटेड बाय टेकिंग अ प्रोब आउटसाइड ऑफ आवर 
uh, atmosphere and see what's the energy density we are getting. So from that energy density, we can compute from the distance how much energy was being emitted by the sun. And from that, we have been able to measure what's the luminosity of sun, which is uh, one point, uh, sorry, not one point, it's six point, it's three point eight into 10 power, 26 joules per second. So these many joules are being emitted by the sun every second. Up again, itna loss hua hai pancha energy ka. So how long would sun have been able to radiate at this rate? Ye dekhe, ye total energy hai jo sun ne ab tak use ki hai. If we only consider the gravitational loss of F energy, this is the luminosity. This is the energy emitted by the sun. Every second. So this is the energy which is which must have been radiated by the sun over all of its lifetime when it was formed from the cloud to this star. So again, this rate se energy emit kar rahe hai, less rate se. So iski age kam kar sakte hai around se, which would be age is. This is the loss of gravitational touch energy. It's the half to hai. that have to be radiated away. Okay, the other half has been converted to the kinetic energy because kinetic energy is uh, equal to half of the touch energy. When the cloud started, there was no kinetic energy. Uh, for, for our case, Just, we assume that it's starting from uh, a zero Kelvin temperature. So all of the energy actually was zero. When it was being pulled down, so itni potential energy to have is ki loss hui, uska jo half hai, that has been converted into kinetic energy to be this temperature. The other half has been radiated away. So only half of this loss has been radiated, the other half has been put into the star itself to be this temperature. So let's divide it by this LS. And you can compute the number here, sun ka mass put kar de, sun ka radius, gravitational constant, the number is about 12 million years only. Which we now know uh, cannot be the case because we have been able to find fossils on earth which date back to about 3 billion years ago. So we know that the sun has to be there for at least 3 billion. And for these fossils to exist for 3 billion years, it means the Earth has to be there much longer. And we don't know the age of Earth is around 4.5 billion. So it means the Sun's age is much, much uh, greater than this one. So this was actually a puzzle at the end of uh, 19th century, that where this energy is coming from, which Sun is radiating the, uh, continuously and uh, which cannot be accounted for by this loss of gravitational energy. So it invariably uh, it should be coming from some other sources and incidentally by the same time in physics we were discovering quantum mechanics and fission and fusion reaction so quickly people were able to explain that Fusion reaction has to be responsible for this uh, uh, energy which is being put into the sun and which is being emitted away. So let's see what uh, if the fusion is possible in sun or not. Okay. So let's try to work out a few numbers and uh, and we will do actually in general because you can use it to see uh, for other stars. A constant star to have is massive enough to ignite the uh, fusion reaction. So just to give you an idea that why do we think that nuclear fusion is involved? When you have four protons, you fuse them together, you can get a helium uh, nuclei and 25 mega electron volts of energy as well. Plus, there are some electrons, neutrinos, and other products. I'm not actually uh, discussing the actual nuclear reaction, 
the important thing is that when protons fuse together, they can form helium atom. And this much is a thing. और अगर आप ये इमेजिन करें कि इस वक्त जो सन है, it's all made. या इस वक्त की जब let's go back to the stage when sun was all hydrogen, because it started like this. So अगर जिस पर दूसरे इमेज भी हैं, but they are very very few. So if it is all made up of hydrogen, we can work out the number of protons, which would simply be the mass. Of the sun divided by the mass of the protons, and uh, because there are electrons as well, but electrons' mass is negligible, so we can compute number of protons by this. And for for each four of them, 25 mega electron volts are being released. So, आप इसको four से divide कर ले और इससे multiply कर ले. This is the energy that would be released over the whole. Age of the sun. और अगर आप उसको sun की present luminosity से divide करें, you get an age which is roughly 100 billion years. And the sun has only been burning for about I think seven eight billion years. This is the Total energy effect keeps on radiating on this. But take a part of the process. But take some cut. After that, it's not going to be left the forest. This is the number of protons. Mass of proton. Okay. So it means that the uh, the source of energy has to be fusion energy. So let's see what are the Possibilities for igniting fusion reaction in a star. Okay. Or many similar the problem. Asam, you have put here the examining. It's because of an error in a number. You you were not able to work out. But if that number would have been correct, you would probably have been able to work out the age and the age of the actually sun to. Consume all of those protons. Today, actually, I will do a uh, bit more than that and uh, work out a more realistic model. Okay? So, ye jo four protons ki fusion hai helium mein, it actually brings with the fusion of two protons together to form deuterium, and then those deuteriums meet with each other to form. So, let's just concentrate on this uh, fusion of two protons. So, these two protons. When they come closer, they face this potential. Okay, so in the the radius sets of the order of one femtometer. So if they can be brought closer to within one femtometer of each other, they will stick together. Because then the electrostatic repulsion will be overcome by the uh, strong nuclear force, and they will be both together. So this is the kind of potential well that we have to bring them together. And once they are away, uh, their distance is more than one femtometer. They simply face this Coulombic repulsion force, which is one over four pi epsilon naught e square over r. Where r is the distance, e is the charge of one proton. So this is the potential profile that these protons face when they approach each other. So let's say. A proton of certain energy E wants to come to, to fuse, it has to cross this barrier of let's say some length, uh, one femtometer to this length here because now its energy is smaller than this pressure. I'm not going to make the case for tunneling because we are already familiar with that. But let's see that if you have to compute that this pressure energy is the peak. आप आर की जगह पे रखते हैं वन फैक्टोमीटर तीन की जगह पे ये इलेक्ट्रॉन चार सके दिस नंबर कम्स आउट तू बी अबाउट टू पॉइंट थ्री एंड टेन पावर माइनस थर्टी चार तो ये प्रेंच अगर आप ये ये पीक निकालना चाहो तो क्लासिकली हमारा प्रोटॉन तू सरमाउंट दिस पी आप उसका टेम्परेचर कंप्यूट कर सकते हैं तू ह� you can find 
the temperature T for this energy to be enough to surmount this barrier or temperature to have that comes out to be about 10 power 10 Kelvin. Okay? And 10 power 10 Kelvin we know does not exist inside sun and many stars. Uh, for our sun we know, uh, know up to a certain degree that the temperature is only 15 into 10 power uh, 6 Kelvin. So it's four order of magnitude smaller than what is required for the proton to classically surmount this band. So it means classical uh, attraction of proton doesn't happen, there's not enough energy. Now, if you can argue that the cost of the first carry 15 into 10 power 6 Kelvin, so not all the particles are going to have that energy, right? That fixed energy. क्योंकि गिवन टेम्परेचर पे कुछ पार्टिकल की एनर्जी ज़्यादा होती है कुछ पार्टिकल की एनर्जी कम होती है एंड एट सदा हाई टेम्परेचर डी पार्टिकल्स फॉलो मैक्सवेल बोल्समैन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो लेट्स सी व्हाट्स दी चांसेस फॉर दैट सो यू नीड्स अ टेम्परेचर ऑफ टेन पावर टेन कैल्वन टू क्लासिकली सरमोंड दिस पैरियर Inside the sun is only 15 into 10 power 6 Kelvin. So let's compute the number of particles using Maxwell distribution inside the sun's core to see what's their distribution and if there are some particles, even though not all, that can still surmount this barrier. So this is the velocity distribution, okay, let me plot it. We have made statistical mechanics ke pehle ye dusra lecture mein try kiya. The Maxwell velocity distribution for classical particles, okay. So at a given temperature T, the particles are distributed at different velocities like this. So we can convert it into an actually energy profile. So for energy, Let's just forget this uh, constant number here and only consider this point. Energy can be able to convert them. So this uh, uh, E square dV can be written as dV cube or here half and V square which is the same down energy. I'm converting it into instead of velocity distribution into an kinetic energy distribution. So this half m v square is written as e. So this d v v square I have written as e two. So it means अगर हम ये use करें हाँ ना the temperature is so high that they all actually go to the same. So v square is two e over m or v cube होगा Two e three by two m three by two. So ये v square का relation है कि मैं दोनों तरफ cube ले के square root ले लूँ, तो I get v cube. Let's put it here और इसको यहाँ पे रखें तो n of e आ जाएगा. और जो constant है, let's ignore that constant e power three by two. और अगर इसका डेरिवेटिव ले लें तो ये आ जाएगा e square root minus e k v t so let me just recap so this is the velocity distribution तो जो v square है उसको आप रिप्लेस कर लें तो e over m से तो कन्वर्ट एक टू पैनेटा के नदी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन यहाँ पे तो e आ गया ये v square और v t तो मैंने v t क्यों लिखा तो v q का यहाँ से करके find करके यहाँ से करके फिर काम चलेगा अगर आप कहते हो सर कंफर्टेबल नहीं भी है you can just concentrate on this factor okay in Maxwell Boltzmann distribution the important thing is that the number of particles are larger at smaller energy and as this e increases their number decreases so this is the distribution, Maxwell distribution. Now they can give a temperature T. Now we have a T put here, which we have to understand that the sun's temperature is 15 into 10 power 6. And now we want to find 
जो इतनी हो कि क्लासिकल ब्रांडर को सर्मोट कर दे तो यू विल सी कि दिस नंबर एक्चुअली कम्स आउट टू बी 10 पावर माइनस 430 समथिंग सच अ स्मॉल नंबर दैट और समथिंग हम इसलिए कंप्यूट करना है कि सांत के अंदर देर ऑलरेडी अ लॉट ऑफ प्रोग्राम्स सो इवन इफ दिस नंबर वुड हैव बीन लेट्स से वन पार्ट इन अ बिलियन दैट माइट हैव इग्नाइटेड फ्यूजन रिएक्शन क्योंकि देर आर एनफ प्रोग्राम्स विद एनर्जी टू कम टुगेदर टू टू फ्यूज एंड सॉर्ट दिस साइड बट टेन पावर माइनस फोर थर्टी एट इज सच अ स्मॉल नंबर दैट इवन इन द अबंडेंट पार्टिकल इन सन देर इज हार्डली एनी पार्टिकल विद दिस एनर्जी और लाइफ ज़्यादा बोलो क्योंकि थोड़े पार्टिकल फ्यूज हैं हाँ फ्यूज ना हो देखें ये हमें बताता है नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम एंड इन अ गिवन वेलोसिटी सो ये हमें बताता है नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स एंड अ गिवन इनर्जी क्योंकि ये देखें अगर लेट्स लुक एट दिस एस अ फंक्शन ऑफ ई दिस प्लॉट इज लाइक दिस दिस एंड ऑफ सो एंड ऑफ so for a given temperature there are a lot of particle with this energy and some particle with this energy some little particle with this energy and I want to find out what's the probability for these particles to have enough energy to surmount that classical barrier so u naught is the this potential energy so this is the u naught so if classically fusion is going to happen so the particle must have that much energy and if you ये नंबर कंप्यूट करें ना कि व्हाट्स दी प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ़ फाइंडिंग अ पार्टिकल विद एनर्जी ग्रेटर देन दिस एनर्जी इस दस नंबर इस रॉफली एट एट अ टेम्परेचर ऑफ़ 15 इनटू 10 पावर 6 कैन हाँ सो सो इट मीन देर इस नो वे दैट दी द फ्यूजन वुड हैव टेकन प्लेस बाय सिंपली टू प्रोटॉन्स कमिंग ट� has to tunnel to this band. Essentially, we already know this case, but uh, I did it because I will need this relation for something else later on. Okay, so let's now come to the tunneling part, which uh, you can already do approximately. Because if I tell you to do a model as a square barrier, you can quickly do it. Okay, but let's try to do it uh, uh, in a bit more detail. So we know that tunneling is it's proportional to minus two alpha. Here there is a coefficient, but when this number is very small, you can actually neglect this. So let's neglect that. And now, if I have an arbitrary barrier, we can, and let's say this is the particle energy E. So we can think of this barrier as made up of several. different square barriers or un sab ka jo total tunneling coefficient hai is the product of the tunneling coefficient of each one of them and let's say they all have a width delta x so it means total tunneling is then by neglecting that part in the exponential minus 2 alpha 1 delta x into minus 2 alpha 2 delta x and so on minus 2 alpha n delta x and I can write it as minus 2 alpha dx. So essentially we integrate the alpha over the barrier and we can get a better estimate for the tunneling probability uh, instead of just modeling the barrier as a square band, as a big square band. इनको हम मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे तो ये पावर ज़ेड हो जाएगी। तो माइनस टू कॉमन ले लें। यू विल हैव अल्फा अपन डे डेलेक्स अल्फा टू डेलेक्स अल्फा टी डेलेक्स दें बिकम्स अ रूपांतर सम। सो इट कैन बी फैक्टर। आप जो है क्विकली वैसे ये याद रखें। अगर स्क्वेयर बैंगियर हो तो दिस इज़ दी टर्निंग
So if we take this thing, I can then compute uh, the tunneling coefficient for so that's it, this is the energy of the particle. So it goes, we have to perform the integration over this function. This function is 1 over 4 pi epsilon r e square over r. Now <laughs> this number L we find this. This number L is the energy of particle and energy of the pressure energy. So this is the distance from the center of one proton where this pressure energy and the energy of the kinetic energy of the particle are same. So let me compute this L. This so is E square over L is equal to. So if I put R is equal to L, then this is the pressure energy at this point. So this is equal to E. So this gives us L equals E square over 4 pi epsilon naught. This is the point where the particle has to tunnel. Okay, so they can carry on the proton. Okay, so it's coming towards another proton. So its energy is higher than the pressure energy. It's coming, 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 coming. But at this point, its energy is now equal to the pressure energy. So it can't go classically over there. So it has to tunnel through this band. And this point is the distance of the other proton. You can find it by equating this pressure energy equal to its energy. So from this, we can find this angle. So, so alpha is alpha is 2 mass of proton u minus e h cut square. And for simplicity, let me approximate this alpha by ignoring this energy e. Okay, for most part, this u is uh, much greater than this e, so I can approximate it as 2 mp u over h cut square. Now u jo hai, wo ye function hai. Okay, you put u here, now the integration limits are 0 to whatever l, so this is your l. This is your u. आप इस alpha को put करें यहाँ पे और sorry यहाँ पे alpha put करें ये वाला, okay? और integrate करें zero to l और आखिर में l की value ये put कर दे, then you will get the tunneling. It's actually very simple integration. मैं ये notes हैं ये upload कर दूँगा. You get the tunneling coefficient, which को book के अंदर उसने p tunneling के नाम से लिखा हुआ है, as exponential minus four e square four pi epsilon naught in respect to mass of proton. ये integrator. You can do simple integration, right? ये देखें ये अल्फा है इसको मैंने इंटीग्रल में रखा और u की वैल्यू पुट कर दी वन ओवर r के प्रोपोर्शनल तो ये बहुत सिंपल इंटीग्रल होगा देखा वन ओवर r स्क्वायर रूट का इंटीग्रल होगा जो कि आराम से इंटीग्रल होगा तो इंटीग्रल कर ले जीरो टू एल यू विल कम टू दिस सो आप ये जो है हमारे पास तरली कोफिशिएंट ये देखना चाहते हैं कि कितने प्रोटॉन्स पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम टर्न कर रहे हैं तो हमें क्या करना चाहिए हमें जितने प्रोटॉन्स हैं उसे मल्टीप्लाई करना होगा पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम राइट क्योंकि हम ऐसे करते हैं ना टर्निंग ऑप्शन हमें देता है एक प्रोटॉन के टर्न होने में अगर देर आर लाइक अ मिलियन प्रोटॉन दर ट्राइंग टू टर्नल यू हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई दिस नंबर विद मिलियन एंड यू विल गेट द नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स दैट आर टर्नली लेट्स से अटेंड इस सो फॉर दैट सो दिस इज़ द टर्निंग प्रोबेबिलिटी और नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम में टेक गिवन इधर चीज़ कितने हैं दे आर गिवन के ये सब कुछ एक्सप्लोरेशन की पावर एवरीथिंग इज 
ये सेम जो फार्मूला है वो आप यूज कर सकते हैं टू फाइंड द फ्यूजन प्रोबेबिलिटी फॉर हीलियम उसी जगह पे जब आपने क्योंकि जब सन के अंदर सारे प्रोटॉन्स खत्म हो जाएंगे देन ओनली हीलियम आर लेफ्ट सो हीलियम की फ्यूजन की जो प्रोबेबिलिटी है यू कैन कंप्लीट एग्जैक्टली विद दिस फार्मूला बाय रिप्लेसिंग मास ऑफ प्रोटॉन एमपी विद मास ऑफ हीलियम और उसके बाद हीलियम से जो कार्बन और लिथियम एटम्स बनते हैं उनकी फ्यूजन की प्रॉपर्टी यू कैन जस्ट कंटिन्यू लाइक दिस आपका सवाल था अब वैसे भी शायद नीचे से निकाल देते हैं If it's nature, because when you're cooking for yourself, you know something over there. The other thing is like okay. So let me actually get back to the cycle, how it happens, and uh, repeat it. That the star is formed by a cloud which is spread over uh, up to infinity. ठीक है कोलैप्सेस टुगेदर एंड देन अ स्टार इज बोर्न स्टार और प्लैनेट में फर्क ये है कि इन अ स्टार द मैस इज हाई इनफ टू जनरेट इनफ टेंपरेचर एट द कोर दैट फ्यूजन स्टॉप्स इफ द मैस ऑफ द बिगिनिंग क्लाउड इज स्मॉल इनफ दैट इट कोलैप्स टुगेदर बट द टेंपरेचर इज नॉट हाई इनफ देन इट बिकम्स अ ब्राउन डॉट समथिंग एंड मे बी इफ इट इज इवन स्मॉलर इट बिकम्स अ प्लैनेट लाइक अ मार्स एंड सो ऑन But if the temperature is high enough, and we can compute when it should be, uh, what temperature is required for the fusion to start, or sun के लिए, if you put T is equal to 15 into 10 power 5, you get uh, almost the same number of proton fusion together as the energy that we are getting from. So the cloud collapse or out there the energy. Okay. और उस पॉइंट पे जहां पे फ्यूजन रिएक्शन स्टार्ट हो जाता है एक्चुअली जो कोलैप्स होता है ना स्टार का वो स्टॉप हो जाता है बिकॉज इनफ एनर्जी इज बीइंग एडेड इनटू इट व्हिच कंपनसेट्स फॉर द रेडिएशन लॉस सो द स्टार इज स्टेबलाइज्ड सो जो सन से भी जो लाइट मिल रही है इट्स नॉट डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द फ्यूजन रिएक्शन द लाइट इज एक्चुअली सिंपली बिकॉज the outer surface of the sun is uh, hot agar uska temperature bahut kam outer surface ka temperature hai tabhi bhi 6000 kelvin okay 6 into 10 power 3 kelvin hoga jo nuclear reaction hai wo core mein ho raha hai jiska temperature 10 power 7 kelvin ke the so that energy is being released into the sun so that keeps sun hot but the energy that we are getting is being released because of black body radiation from the outer surface of the sun so the nuclear reaction is compensating for that more so we are not directly seeing that uh, nuclear energy. in fact hum ko ho sakta hai calculation kare hain jiske hum dekhenge that might take uh, hundreds of years for uh, energy released and photons inside the core to even reach the surface of the sun because of lot of collisions okay any questions Just to get back to your point uh, of angular momentum, so why do a lot of stars and planets they all have this angular momentum? Because when the dust cloud, the the beginning dust cloud actually have, usually has a, a small rotation, whatever is this angular momentum, it slowly rotates, and as it collapses, the rate of rotation increases. As it collapses further, it begins to rotate even faster to preserve the total angular momentum. So uh, there's no requirement for the star to be rotating, but in general, having an angular momentum for a star is actually uh, not forbidden. And if you uh, think of the possibilities, angular momentum zero is only one possibility, and angular momentum non-zero, there are many other possibilities. It can be one, it can be two, and so on. So most stars that we see, they have that angular momentum. You can simply superimpose onto it, and it doesn't radiate because it remains constant. It doesn't affect uh, most of what we are seeing. It's true for a static star. It's true for uh, a rotating star. Any other questions? Did you? So this is a good question. So actually, to have better calculation, instead of using the mass of proton, 
uh, you should use uh, the reduced mass of the AI, which is, if two protons are taken in the far end, so use, use half MP instead of MP. And that's a minor point. But it's not a big problem. You have 274 people, there's only one person. This is the exam request. He used the reduced mass of protons instead of the actual mass of protons. So there was one person who actually did it. Okay, so as I said, so I have many both uh short videos actually. Actually, um upload the chapter paying it, you know, we can get اس پہ نام کا فیس نمال ہوگی کہ یہ یہ واسطہ آ رہا ہے یہ واسطہ آ رہا ہے کہ ہم نے ڈیفرنٹ پر آگے ڈیسکر ہوں so there is one short video that tells you the names of different stars and why they are that and then there is another video that is on supernova because ہم جو study کر رہے ہیں اس تین چل لیکچر میں we won't be studying one object it's called red giant red giant جو ہے وہ جب star die کر رہا ہوتا ہے it's an intermediate phase. It's a phase when the core collapses to a small point and the outer layers evaporate towards the outer side. It's called supernova. This the phase is too complicated to address in a classroom because uh, the mechanics is uh, much more involved. So we won't be studying that. We'll actually be focusing on the remnant core after the main sequence star has died. So still, I thought okay, maybe uh, for a few minutes we can look into that stage just the form of video that will be concentrating on the course. Let's first see the smaller one, then the bigger one. Supernova, one of the most explosive events known to humankind. Supernova explosions occur at the end of a star's life. Talk about going out with a bang. A supernova is the ending of a star's life, but let's quickly explore the beginning. Let's follow along the path of a star. A star is born in a solar nebula. As it grows, enters one of two pathways of life. Depending on its size, the star becomes either an average star or a massive star. The average star then becomes a red giant, a planetary nebula, and ends its life as a white dwarf. The massive star turns into a red supergiant, goes supernova, and ends up as a neutron star or a black hole. Again, depending on its size, a star is born in a solar nebula and grows to adulthood as a main sequence star. Some stars end up much smaller than our sun, and some much, much bigger. The way a star spends its later life and finally dies depends on how big it originally was. Small to medium stars turn into red giants, and big stars turn into red supergiants. These are some of the biggest stars in the universe by volume, although they are not the most massive. Betelgeuse and Antares are the best known examples of a red supergiant. Stars which are eight times or more massive than our sun, whether they are red giants or red supergiants, end their lives in the most spectacular way. They go supernova. A supernova is an explosion that occurs when the star runs out of fuel and fusion stops. Without the outward pressure from the fusion in the core, there's nothing to counteract the inward pressure of gravity. What happens first is that the outside of the star swells into a red supergiant. The core of the star begins shrinking and grows hotter and denser. For a while, a new series of nuclear reactions that turn the core to iron occur, which temporarily stops the collapse of the core, but it is only temporary. When the core contains mostly iron, it has nothing left to fuse and fusion in the core ceases. In less than a second, the star begins the final phase of its collapse. The temperature in the core rises to over 100 billion degrees as the iron atoms are crushed together. 
There are a lot of forces going on at this point, some repulsive, some compressive, until finally the whole star explodes and produces a shock wave that forces the matter from the star into space. All that remains of the original star is a small, super dense core composed almost entirely of neutrons. This is a neutron star. If the original star was extremely big, even the neutrons don't survive and the core collapses, forming a black hole. A star starts in the stellar nebula and grows to a main sequence star. Explore in another video. If the star grew big enough, it ages to a red giant, a huge star several times larger than our sun in the later stages of its life. Eventually the star dies in a huge explosion known as a supernova, a huge stellar explosion that What do you see when you look at the night sky? Depending on where you live, you see mostly stars. If you look at the sky without a telescope, you see white stars, maybe some faintly blue, or even sometimes some yellow or orange ones. The color depends on the star's surface temperature. For example, our sun's surface temperature is about 6,000 Kelvin. Although it looks yellow from Earth, the light of the sun would actually look very white if we were in space. This white light coming off the sun is because its temperature is 6,000 Kelvin. If the sun were cooler, it would give off light more in the red range, and if the sun were hotter, it would look more blue. The coolest stars in the universe are the red dwarf stars. These are very tiny stars, some of the tiniest, so they don't burn as hot, and their surface temperature is only 3,500 Kelvin. The light they give off looks mostly red to us. Red is also the color you see with red giant stars, huge stars that ran out of hydrogen fuel and bloated up many times their original size. The luminosity of the star is spread out over the much larger surface area of the red giant, making this star cooler than other large stars. On the opposite end of the color spectrum are the blue stars. These stars are giants and hypergiants, much, much bigger than the sun, and also much, much hotter, between 10,000 and 40,000 Kelvin. For us on Earth, though, most stars in the sky, except for the brightest ones, appear white or bluish white because they don't emit enough light for our eyes to see color. Scientists have been studying stars for a long time, and over time they have learned to tell a lot about a star just by determining its temperature and atmospheric pressure. The temperature tells them the surface brightness of a star, and the pressure tells them an approximate size of the star which tells them whether the star is a giant, a dwarf, or something in between. These two measurements taken together can often give information on the star's age and distance from the Earth. Scientists like to organize and classify things. They developed a classification system called the Spectral Code and have used it since 1943. To those who can read it, the Spectral Code tells just what kind of an object a star really is its color, size, and luminosity compared to other stars, in addition to its peculiarities, history, and future. Let's learn a bit of the classification system. Scientists classify stars by temperature and the elements they absorb, which are called their spectra. They have divided stars into seven main types. There are seven main types of stars, O, B, A, F, G, K, and M. The O stars are the bright, hot, blue stars, and the M stars are the dimmer, cooler, red stars. A common mnemonic for remembering the order of the classification is, Oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. But I like this mnemonic better. Oh boy, an F grade kills me. According to the modern spectral classification system, O stars are blue, B stars are blue-white, A stars are white, F stars are yellow-white, G stars are yellow, K stars are orange, M stars are red. These categories of stars can also be broken down into tenths by giving them a number of zero to nine. So an A5 star is five tenths between an A star and an F star. Class O stars are very hot, bright, and look bluish. The class O star is very rare. Only about 0.00003% of main sequence stars are O stars. These are also some of the brightest, most massive stars in the sky, shining with over a million times the power of our sun. Class B stars are very bright and blue. These stars are short-lived, so they don't travel far from where they are born. 
There are few of these Class B stars, only about 0.13% of all stars. Class A stars are white or bluish white. About 0.625% of the stars in the sky are Class A. Class F stars are white and make up about 3% of stars. Class G stars are yellowish white. Our sun is a Class G star. These stars are more common, about 7.5% of stars. Class K stars are orangish stars that are slightly cooler than the sun. They make up about 12% of stars. Class M stars are the most common class, about 76.02% of stars. We can't see any Class M stars with their naked eye, though, because none of them are bright enough. Most Class M stars are red dwarfs, but there are also some giants and supergiants in this class, along with some hotter brown dwarfs. Scientists classify stars by their color and temperature into seven categories. The O stars are the brightest and hottest, and the M stars are the coolest and dimmest. The easiest way to remember the categories in order is with a mnemonic such as, Oh boy, F grade kills me. This spectral classification tells scientists a lot about a star, including the approximate size of the star, what type it is, how old it is, and how far away it is. Thank you very much. Class O stars look bluish, only about 0.0.